Deepcool has been absolutely killing it with their new coolers and they've been really listening to the feedback from the community and they're making some of their best products ever right now. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now and turn on that little bell to receive notifications. We upload basically every single day, so make sure you're subscribed. Now, you guys have been asking us to cover a lot more air cooling solutions, so we've been doing it. But I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you guys how to install Deepcool's brand new AK500 Digital for both Intel and AMD systems. Before we begin, I want to make this clear that this video is for demonstration purposes only. Every system, every motherboard, and every setup is different. This guide is to give you the fundamental idea of how to install the AK500 Digital. This is not a review of the cooler, but I'm going to answer some of the inevitable questions that we're probably going to get about this cooler. Yes, this cooler has RGB. Yes, you can install more than one fan on this cooler. Yes, you can put any fans you like on the AK500 Digital. Yes, it will work with your motherboard's RGB, provided you have three pin, five volt addressable RGB. Yes, it will work with the motherboard and CPU that you already have. The AK500 Digital will mount to an LGA 115X, 1200 or 1700 Intel socket, as well as AM4 and AM5 AMD sockets. Let's dive in. First of all, let's take a bit of a look at what you get in the box with the Deepcool AK500 Digital. There's not too much here, but yeah, we'll have a look. First of all, we've got the clips to hold a second fan if you're wanting to do a second fan on this, because as mentioned previously, you can do that. There's also all of the mounting hardware required for every type of installation. If we just dig into this a little bit more, this is the AM4 and AM5 mounting hardware if you're doing that installation. This is all of the Intel mounting gear if you're doing that installation. There's also an installation guide, which, uh, yeah, we're not going to be using in this video at all because that's the point of this video. There's also this little inline resistor. This is just in case you wanted to make the fan spin slower and quieter. There's also included thermal compound. This is Deepcool's own thermal compound. We've got this included screwdriver to make installation easier. So you don't need any of your own tools to install this cooler. It comes with everything that you need. And then the cooler itself. Let's take a look at the AK500 Digital. It's a fully blacked out cooler with a single 120mm fan pre-installed. Let's start off with AMD installation. If you want Intel installation, there are chapters in the description. You can jump to that section of the video now. This is the required mounting hardware for AM4 and AM5 installations. There are no exceptions here. You do need to use all of this. Let's start off with removing the stock mounting hardware that will be on either your AM4 or an AM5 board. For AM4, you will need to leave the backplate in place. With AM5, it is there all of the time. You can't remove it. So just remove the mounting clips. You can use the included deep pull screwdriver to do this. And once you're done with that, we can move on and install the mounting hardware. First of all, you want to locate four of these screws. What we're going to do then is fasten them into the backplate that's pre-installed on the motherboard. You can finger tighten these, don't over tighten them, otherwise it's going to be very difficult to remove them at a later point in time. Locate the AM4 slash AM5 mounting brackets. This is what they look like here. Then line them up with the screws we just put into the motherboard making sure that the arrow with CPU is facing inwards towards the CPU. Locate four of these bolts. We're going to then fasten the bolts to the screws that we put into the motherboard. And we're going to rinse and repeat that process until both sides are completed and all of the mounting hardware is installed. You can then tighten those bolts with the included screwdriver just to make sure that they don't come out, but please don't over tighten these, otherwise you'll hate your life. Now we're going to remove the fan and the screen on top of the cooler to make it easier to screw the cooler down onto the IHS of your CPU. Also, this is a good time to remove the sticker on the bottom of the cooler as well. Okay, locate the tube of thermal compound. You're wanting to apply just over a p-dot size here for this AM5 CPU. AM4 is the same. Do that in the center. Too much is okay. Too little is not good. Okay, then you'll want to lower the cooler and line up the screws 
with the mounting hardware, then fasten them in. Don't do them up all the way. Do a little bit at a time. You'll notice there's a hole on top of the cooler as well to put the screwdriver through and just tighten them up and rinse and repeat that process until the cooler is tightened. You'll also notice that there's a hard stop on the screws so you can't over tighten them, but just once it stops, stop turning. If you're lucky, it should look a little something like this when it's mounted. Next up, we're going to install the screen back onto the top of the cooler. It's magnetic, it's very easy to do. And then we're going to clip that fan into place as well so we can start with wiring. Locate the PWM fan connector. It looks a little something like this. Then you're going to want to locate a CPU fan header on your motherboard. It'll look a little something like this. Then you want to plug that cable straight into that header on your motherboard. Locate the addressable RGB cables. You want to locate a three pin five volt addressable RGB header on your motherboard and then plug that RGB cable into your motherboard, making sure that it's actually plugged in. Don't plug it into a four pin connector. Lastly, there's this, it's the USB connector. Locate an open USB 2.0 header on your motherboard and then plug it into that header and it will only go in one way. You cannot plug this in incorrectly. Lastly, as a bit of an optional step, you can use this inline resistor to slow the fan down if you want your system to be quieter. Locate a CPU fan header, plug the resistor into that and then plug your PWM connector from your fan into that. And as mentioned, it is optional. You do not need to do this. This is the mounting hardware required for Intel installations. There are two brackets, four bolts and four screws. You'll also require this back plate here. And depending on your socket, you'll need to change the offset here. Basically, you just push them and they'll clip into place. I would recommend putting the back plate on a flat surface if the motherboard's out of your case and then lowering your motherboard onto the back plate with the screws going through the holes on your motherboard. Locate this bolt here and then you'll want to finger tighten them into the bolts coming through the motherboard on that back plate and rinse and repeat that process until all four of them are in place. Locate the Intel mounting bracket, being sure to have the arrow facing in towards the CPU itself. You want to lower that into place onto the bolts we just installed through the backplate on the motherboard. And then you'll want to locate four of these bolts here and we're going to screw them in. You can finger tighten these in by hand. Try not to over tighten these. Rinse and repeat the process until all four are installed. Again, just double check that the arrows are facing in towards the center, towards the CPU itself. And then you can remove the fan from the cooler. You'll also want to remove the screen from the top of the cooler as well, just making it easier to fasten the cooler onto the mounting hardware. This is a good time to peel off the sticker on the bottom of the cooler as well. Locate the tube of included thermal compound. We're going to apply a little line in the center of the IHS of this CPU. This is what I would recommend for these Intel LGA 1700 CPUs. And then what we're going to do is lower the cooler onto the IHS of the CPU, making sure to align the bolts with the mounting hardware that we've just installed. Once it's in place, hold it there and then get the included screwdriver and start fastening the bolts up, but don't do them too much. Just do one at a time, just so they grab the threads. Put the screwdriver through the top hole on the cooler as well and just rinse and repeat that process until the cooler is fastened securely without it being loose and you shouldn't be able to move it. The screws also have a hard stop as well, so don't over tighten them. And when you're done, it should look a little something like this on your Intel motherboard. Next up, we're going to put the cables back in and remount the fan so we can get all of those miscellaneous cables plugged in. Locate the PWM fan connector. It looks a little something like this. Then you're going to want to locate a CPU fan header on your motherboard. It'll look a little something like this. Then you want to plug that cable straight into that header on your motherboard. Locate the addressable RGB cables. You want to locate a three pin five volt addressable RGB header on your motherboard 
and then plug that RGB cable into your motherboard, making sure that it's actually plugged in. Don't plug it into a four pin connector. Lastly, there's this, it's the USB connector. Locate an open USB 2.0 header on your motherboard and then plug it into that header and it will only go in one way. You cannot plug this in incorrectly. Lastly, as a bit of an optional step, you can use this inline resistor to slow the fan down if you want your system to be quieter. Locate a CPU fan header, plug the resistor into that and then plug your PWM connector from your fan into that. And as mentioned, it is optional. You do not need to do this. Head on over to the Deepcool website to download the software for the cooler. We're then going to quickly install the software. It's a very straightforward process. Should take about 20 seconds to install the software. It'll install and it'll be in your system tray and all of the settings for the cooler will be there. You've only got a little bit of customization with this cooler so you can change the temperature scale, alarm controls, and yeah, it's very, very basic software. And that's it. And if everything went to plan, it should look a little something like this. I think I covered pretty much everything in this video and if you've got any questions, feel free to head on over to our Tech Help Discord or drop a comment down below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and let us know how it helped you. And if you didn't like this video, eh, that's fair enough. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. That's me, right? Yeah, you peak, we seek. And yeah, let us know if this video helped you. I appreciate you all very much. Thank you so much for watching.